Today I'm going to be using leftover fabric to help me in making beautiful fall crafts to decorate my home. Hey everybody, I'm Melissa from Welcome to the Woods. For this first craft, I'm going to be cutting up a piece of an old sweater. This is the arm off of a sweater that was slightly stretchy and I thought it would work great to make a fabric pumpkin. So the first thing you do is cut off a piece depending on how big you want your pumpkin to be. I'm going to make mine sort of smaller and so I did about a 9 inch long piece. You turn it inside out and you use a small rubber band to tie off one of the ends. This is going to hold it closed on the bottom of the pumpkin. Then you flip that inside out again and I'm filling it with buffalo snow which is meant to be fake snow for Christmas time but I've used this for everything including batting. Then you use another little rubber band to secure the top of the fabric closed. Now we're going to be taking yarn and I'm just using white because that's what I had on hand and stringing through a darning needle. Now because this is so fluffy it's easy to push the needle all the way through the pumpkin. And when you first pull it through, you're going to want to get a lot of extra yarn because you're not snipping the yarn, you're just threading this up and down through the middle of the pumpkin to make bulges, like a, like a pumpkin, of course. So <laughs> I like to do five bulges. I just think an odd number looks the best and five is the easiest to do. When you end, you're going to have the ball of yarn attached um, out the top and then you're going to have the needle and the end of yarn coming out the bottom. So just poke that needle back up through the pumpkin and then adjust all of your um, yarn lines appropriately. You can see I'm making them tighter here so my bulges get bigger. Then you're going to tie off your loose ends on the top and snip off the excess yarn, just hiding it underneath those kind of um, the ends of the fabric that you secured with the rubber band earlier. Now I'm simply taking a stick from outside and I cut the end at like kind of a 45 degree angle to make it look more like a pumpkin stem. And we're going to be sticking that down inside the top. Um, just in the middle of all of that extra fabric and down through the rubber band. I always secure this with a bit of hot glue. If the ends of your fabric that are bunched up on top look kind of strange, you could flatten those down with hot glue as well. As an adorable fall finish on this pumpkin, I am adding a few rust colored fall leaves. You could also do twine wrapped stem or you could do twine uh, like curly cues along the top if you wanted to add some interest. And I did this on another pumpkin I made as well. This one is bigger and I used some waffle knit fabric and just kind of, um, it wasn't a sleeve of a sweater, I just basically made a tube out of a piece of fabric that was larger. So this is how it turned out. I think that both of these pumpkins are so adorable on my coffee table. Stay tuned though, I have one more craft to show you, but I want to invite you now, if you haven't already, to follow and subscribe to Welcome to the Woods so you never miss what I'm up to next. So I got a really cute waffle knit shower curtain at a garage sale a while back for like a dollar because it had a yellow stain on it, but I'm just not going to use that part of the fabric. I'm going to cut it up into pieces and make no sew pillow covers with it. The shower curtain has this adorable design on it with like a flap and then some puka shell buttons. So I'm going to make that as the feature in the middle of the front of my pillow. Does that make sense? So the first thing to do is to lay down the pillow that you're going to be making your no sew pillow cover for. And I am just stretching this up and down. You can see it's going to be a tight fit, but I think it's going to work. You want to make sure there's about an inch of space all the way around um, the edges of your pillow, but then you want um, two and a half times the length of the pillowcase. So I'm going to be cutting this long strip you'll see. It's just slightly wider than the pillow, but much longer. All right, now you want to make sure that your fabric that you want on the outside of the pillow cover is flipped up towards you, and then um, the bad side, the inside, is flipped down at the ground. Fold your pillow cover over so that the flap that is on the underside is the one that's going to be showing when it's when it's on the back, like nice. So if you have one edge that's hemmed and one edge that's not, the one that's not should be on the top. Now you're creating your pillowcase uh, pocket 
cover with just sewing down the edges that you folded. I'm using hem adhesive, it's like um, hemming tape, because I don't own a sewing machine, but if you had a sewing machine, you could just run this whole side in your sewing machine and be done. So I'm cutting a longer piece of tape and I'm laying that in the edge, and I'm doing this for both sides. I got the heavy duty tape because I knew that my waffle knit fabric would be kind of thick. And this actually was kind of hard to get the tape to melt, so I ended up using a wet rag and laid that down to create super steam with my iron and really get it to bond. Hold the iron in each place for a few seconds and then when you're done you're going to flip it over and you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Remember to add a little extra adhesive tape in the flap where the pocket is just in case that's not fully adhered down like I'm doing here. Then you simply flip your pillow cover back uh, right side out and stuff in your pillow. Now mine was a tight fit which I really liked but the two puka shell buttons on the front were kind of strained so I ended up sewing on a third one to make it look balanced. I also made a second pillow cover out of just the waffle knit part of the shower curtain that I did because I wanted to try out this idea for a dye made from coffee. I wanted this natural dye to be um, kind of a like a beige fall brown. So I added a half a cup of instant coffee grounds as well as the leftover coffee grounds from our morning coffee into a bowl where I dumped in a half gallon of boiling water. Now this um, created the dye by letting all of the coffee beans seep their color into the water. I let this sit about an hour before adding a half cup of vinegar as well. The vinegar is to set the color in the fabric and make it more permanent. Now, just a note, natural dyes will only work with natural linens like cotton. So when I put the pillow cover in, right away I could see results, but you have to remember that the color will never be as dark once you rinse out the coffee dye. So I left it in there overnight hoping it would darken, but really it kind of stayed the same color as what I initially put in. So I would say that the initial dyeing only needs to happen like an hour or two and then you can remove it. I removed the pillow cover into a bowl of ice water um, just to get out all of the extra dye. And the ice water quickly turned into just as dark as the dyeing water, which made me very nervous, but it ended up being okay. I did put a little bit of dish soap in the cold water just because I was thinking I could wash it out and then use it just fine as is. However, my dye job was a little bit streaky, so I did end up throwing this in the laundry with regular detergent right away before putting it on my pillow. I also dried it on regular heat in my dryer. You can see the two pillow covers I made here and the difference in the color between the bright white and the coffee dyed one. I really like how they turned out and I love that texture of the waffle knit. I hope this project encourages you to think outside the box for fabric sources using things like tablecloths, curtains, etc. that you would never think of to use before. I hope that you love my craft ideas in this video. Both the pumpkins and the pillow covers turned out just as good as I could hope, and I'd love to know which one was your favorite. Vote in the comments below, and if I inspired you with this project, then please click share. It would mean the world to me. I love decorating my house for fall, and if you want to follow along in behind the scenes, then you can follow the link in the description on this video to follow me on Instagram. That's where I share a lot of behind the scenes footage in my stories. Thanks so much for watching everybody. We'll catch you next time on Welcome to the Woods.